Hi friends, after a while we are again back with another Ask a Question series. It's been a while since we had one, so we have decided to have a Ask a Question series for you this week. And this week's question has been sent to us by a user called Midan. The main topic of discussion this week is going to be on a DAX tip, which is on how we can implement correlated subquery logic inside DAX. Quite often we have lots of scenarios which in the usual case we implement in SQL using correlated subqueries. So the question is how we can do the similar kind of scenarios inside DAX. So let's look at one of the typical scenario which was sent to us by the user and then let's see how it can be sold first in our SQL server using SQL statement and second inside DAX. As discussed, we will be making use of correlated subquery concept inside SQL Server to solve this and then we will see how the corresponding logic can be built inside your Power BI desktop using DAX functions. So let's first look at the scenario. The scenario looks like this. So I have a customer order data which is coming from a file which consists of product categories. And it indicates the items purchased by different customers belongs to which product category over different years like for example for 2019 how many items they purchased from apparels how many items they purchased from a fitness category so when you see these websites they have different categories so the intention here is to track the categories which the customers are interested in and the requirement is to find out category associations which is like if a particular user buys a particular category what are the other categories that he is always interested in so that whenever the customer comes back you can always show them some offers related to the corresponding categories or maybe you can give them special offers as a bundle offer which is based on this category associations when you know that he always buys another category product whenever he buys one product then you know, can also give combo offers like suppose if a person is buying a sports shoes there is every every chance that you would also buy some kind of sports apparel along with that so this is an example where you have a category association so to find out that you need history of data of what categories they purchased and when they purchased a particular category what were the other categories they are interested so if you see uh, such a scenario in a sql server you will use a query like this so if you see these users are typical correlated subquery logic so in this example we have taken the cases where we are finding out all the users who have bought apparel items in 2019 and we are trying to find out what all other categories that they have bought in all the years so this is a very simplistic scenario in the actual case it might be more complicated but for this kind of scenario if you see the query it looks like this so what you are doing is you are basically getting the data from customer order summary you are summarizing it by order year and product category and you are getting the total of items and your main factor here is that you have to find out all users who have bought apparel in the year 2019 so for that purpose you use the correlated subquery inside the subquery you are finding out all the customers who have bought apparels in 2019 and then using the name you correlate it with the external query and get all such customer records and then find out what all categories they have bought and how many items they have bought from that category in each of the year so now the question is how we can implement this in DAX so before that let's just go and see this in uh, SQL Server itself so in the SQL management studio we have the table set up for this purpose which is the customer order summary and we have some data being introduced so what we are doing here is that we are actually finding all the users who have bought apparel in 2019 and we are getting all the other categories which are bought from them so if you see this you can see that the people who have bought apparels are two people one is if you see the data you can see that in 2019 apparel was bought by andrew and matthew and uh, what they have bought in the other years is what we are interested in so for 2019 andrew bought electronics two so that's what you get here like electronics is two for 2019 similarly in 2019 apparel andrew bought 11 and matthew bought 15 so 11 plus 15 total apparel is 26 that's what you get here apparel is 26 and similarly fitness only matthew bought it's three so you get fitness three and sports is two 
sports is to, because there is no other uh, people who has bought there and now if you come to 2020 you can see that only andrew and matthew are your interested people so andrew has bought fitness 3 in 2020 so that's what you see here 2020 fitness 3 again if you see medicines he has bought 5 so medicines 5 and apparels 22 so you see apparels 20. so that is what you are doing is that you are pulling all the details of andrew and matthew together in all the years because they were the ones who bought apparels in 2019 so if you see the query as i told we use this sub query to get this customer list which will consist of andrew and matthew and then we'll get all their order history and find out for each year for each category how much they bought in together so that's what you get as answer now suppose if you want to show this in power bi let's see how we can do this for this purpose we'll first load power bi with the same data and then we'll use dax queries inside that let's open a power bi worksheet now with the same data that we have set up inside sql server so we have already opened the sheet and the sheet already has the table which is loaded with the data that we have found inside our sql server database the same data now we need to first go and add two derived tables this would be used for filling the slicers because if you see the requirement the year as well as the category has to be selected by the users so for this purpose we need to create two slicers and of course there should be associated tables so let's go and click on new table and create a new table which will have a distinct list of years based on the main table so let's name this year and let's make it distinct of the years from the main table and this will have all the years which is to 2019 2020 and 2021 these are the years for which we have data in our main table. so now that the year slicer table is done let's create a new table for product category so let's name it product category and again that would be distinct of product category from the table so it will be customer order product category so now if you see it will have the details of all the categories that we have data so now that we have created the slicers let's go to the visuals and we are going to create the uh, slicers for this so let's create a slicer which is based on product category and let's create a new slicer which should be based on year and we are going to make this single selected we need to make sure that the year is not summarized otherwise it will take it as a measure and it will summarize it so let's not summarize it and then let's select the values and we are going to make it into drop downs so what we can do is like go to the slicer and you can make it into a drop down here also you can make it into a drop down and what you can do is like in addition you can make it single select because we are not going to have multiple values here it is going to be always a single value so what you can do is you can make it single select this will be available inside the properties so if you go inside the properties you have single select here enable the single select and similarly for the date also you have inside that the single select so it's like single select so that you can only select one of the years or you can only select one of the categories so now that the slicers are set up now we need to set up the main table for that what we need to do is that we need to add a new measure so that measure will again consist of three parts the first part will be to getting the selected value from these two slicers and of course we'll be using selected value function for that purpose second part would be to get the sub query that we saw in the case of uh, sql server similarly we need to implement that sub query first and we'll be using that sub query inside the main query to correlate and that is how you implement correlated sub queries so let's do it one by one let's go to the main table and add that measure now and let's name that measure as let's name it category orders or maybe category items because we are actually summing up the items so let's name it category items so first step for us would be to add a variable and this will give us the selected year and that would be the selected value from the, the first year pump so this will give us the value of the year that is selected from the year slice and similarly for the product category we need to get it from the product category slicer and so we have both the values now captured in two variables now we'll be using these two values and getting the details of all users who have bought that particular category related item in that particular year so for that purpose let's create the third one that would be the users so for getting the users first we need to 
get the list of all the records so we need to apply a filter on top of the entire table which table customer order table and here we need to only look for those records where the year belongs to this year so the order year will come from the variable and also the category will also come from the corresponding category variable so this will make sure that we are only selecting those records which corresponds to those users who, who bought that particular year and for that particular category so this will give us that entire table but we don't require the entire table so we need to use selected columns we'll apply selected columns on top of this filter table which contains only those users entries who have bought that particular category in the year and we will only select the users so now we got the list of users who have bought that particular selected category items in that particular year. now using these users we have to correlate this list to the main query and we need to make sure that in the main query we are going to return only those items which are bought by that particular user during each of those year and the category combinations so let's now do that so we'll we can now use a return because we are going to return the value and then here inside that we are going to calculate the sum of items we want the number of total number of items which are bought by these users so the expression will look like this so what we are doing is we are calculating using a calculate function the sum of the items which are coming from our table because we need the total items now based on what condition we want we will need to only include those rows which belongs to the set of users and the set of users are already saved in a table type of variable called users it's like an array of values so that's why we use in operator here when you use in that array what it does is that out of the full table it will only filter for those rows where the customer belongs to one of those in this list so in our example if you remember either andrew or matthew who bought the apparel bill related items in 2019 and then what we need to do is like we'll get the complete table out of that in out of that we need to because here in dax we have something known as filter context for each row the filter context will correspond to the corresponding row value of year and category because we are going to show the data at the year category level we are going to show it inside a matrix where the rows belongs to year and the columns belongs to the categories so for that purpose we will make use of these two additional conditions the additional condition should be the year should be equal to the value in the context that's where we use max of this will give us the year value in the current context which is the current row and similarly the product category should correspond to the product category value in the current context so what we need to do here is that we also need to apply a max over here so this will make sure that we are getting for every context the corresponding value of the sum of items for that context each context will have a year value and a category value so it will get that value and it will return it so now if you create this so the measure is now created now if you go and add a matrix and we are going to drag and drop year into the rows and the category into the columns and if you now drag and drop this measure into the values you can see that you will get the same value that you got in SQL Server but in this time because we are using it in a matrix we will get it in pivoted format so if you remember our earlier uh, result for 2019 we got four rows apparels electronics fitness and sports 26 2 3 and 2 now if you come back and compare it with the result that we get in power bi again for 2019 apparels 26 which is correct then electronics is 2 electronics is 2 which is correct fitness is 3 and sports is 2 fitness is 3 and sports is 2 similarly for 2020 we have 1 2 3 4 so first one would be apparels 22 cosmetics 8 fitness 3 and medicines 5 let's check that as well so for 2020 we have apparels 22 cosmetics 8 fitness 3 and medicines 5 which is correct and for 2020 we have only fitness for 2 here you can check that you will also have fitness for 2 that means that the result is correct so let's conclude that the corresponding DAX function would be same as what we wrote here first we got the full list of users then using that we filter the main table and then out of that filter table we apply the context values the context values which comes from this matrix the year value and the 
category value which comes from the matrix and we just filter the table further based on that and so you will get a, that only those rows which corresponds to this here and this category and then we will just sum of the items to get the total of those items. Now if you see the only thing here is that we the total values we are getting here are wrong. This is not the correct totals. This is because here if you see the total row, the total row does not have a category value or a year only the year value is in context not the category value but here if you see in our logic we are applying always a year value and a category value that is the reason why it is getting wrong values so what we need to do is like we need to have a conditional statement for the detailed columns we need to apply both order year and product category values from the context and for the total because this is this total is at year level we need to only add the year filter and we need to bypass the category phase. So let's make that small change in this expression so that we bypass it for the total column. So, so we need to have a conditional statement here which identifies the total. So let's see how we can do that. We can make use of function called ease in scope which can be used to check if that particular column is in the scope of a particular grouping. If the column is in scope, then we will apply the corresponding logic, if not in another logic. So we can use that conditional statement here. So what we have done here is that we have put a if condition in that product category comparison. So the year comparison will still be same, but for the product category comparison, we are checking if that it is in scope of the product category. That means if the column is a part of the product category group. So these are all parts of product category groups this is the total row so this is not a part of product category group so that happens is that all except this row this will be true so then we will apply the current context product category value which is what we did in the previous case and whenever it is the total row we will not apply this we will just pass the field value as it is so what will happen it will be always true this is equal to this this will be always true which means that this particular filter will get bypassed this will not get applied at all in so in such cases that means in this row only this filter will be applied only the year filter now if you see the result you can see that the result is correct it became 33 from 2 so now if you see 26 20 plus 2 28 plus 3 31 plus 2 33 similarly 22 plus 8 30 plus 3 33 plus 5 38 so now the totals are correct so this is how we calculate these values for this pivoted matrix by applying the principle of correlated subqueries. We got the list of users who bought that particular category in that particular year based on our slicer selections and then we used it inside the main table to filter the rows and then we applied the corresponding row context for the detailed columns row as well as the column value in this case and for the total column we applied only the row level value not the column level value. We just bypassed it and then we got the result. So this gives an example of how you can apply corresponding correlated subquery logic inside your DAX queries so as to get your result inside Power BI. I hope this finds useful to the people who are planning to implement similar logic inside Power BI by using the DAX similar to your SQL expressions. So as seen from the quick demo, it's very easy to simulate the correlated subquery logic inside your tax by using a table of values which you can store inside a variable and then using the variable inside your main calculation using one of the operators like in so this gives a good opportunity for the developers to implement such correlated subqueries inside your meshes which you can use inside your power bi Visuals. As usual, keep sending your feedback and let me know your comments on this. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you are seeing this for the first time and click on the bell icon for getting notifications of useful videos like this. Meet you all soon with another quick tip next week. Till then, bye.